morning, Kolkata. It's such a lovely day to have all of you sitting here with me. And I wonder, I mean, this theme got me thinking, what now? I'm standing on this red dot. Am I scared? Yeah, there are so many people sitting here and listen. But when in doubt, my thing was, instead of saying, what now? What next? I think that's the theme that I would like to share with you. So I'll begin with a tribute to my grandmother, a lady in the early 1900s who was a child widow and an orphan at two, a child widow at eight, left to her destiny, but there was a mother who knew that what now was so important and sent her to Pune at the Karve Institute. This lady with sheer grit and determination working in their house went on to become a doctor, went to Africa, looked after n number of people, came back to India and cared for women in her maternity home and taught n number of other women. A diminutive little lady of four foot nothing, but what a stature. She was the one who's been my role model. Thank you. So with that, I now would like to share my journey. July 78 from pigtails through cocktails to my tails in 2020. <laughs> And then at the end of that, again at crossroads of what now? And I was wondering when, should I be a grandmom? I've got a lovely grandchild. Or should I jump in for new challenges? And I chose to do both. So therefore, I went on to take on as the Vice Chancellor of the Maharashtra University of Health Sciences. Thank you. So but there were early lessons. I mean, when I joined medical college, I could have joined any, but I chose to swim against the tide. It was Armed Forces Medical College with no background in the army, but just impressed with the discipline, the kind of turnout that those students had in one visit, and I was sold. I joined that, and then I was like a child in a you know play store with wonderful opportunities. I failed my first part. I'm not ashamed, because that taught me my lessons. It taught me that I need to work hard to remain focused, and then I can party harder. So I got it all. So therefore, on one hand, were, there was a huge peer pressure, aspirations, distractions, fear of failure. Who doesn't have it? We all do. But I looked at the opportunities that they gave me. And having balanced it all out was the D-Day, where all those trophies that I won, but the most important was someone who's sitting in the audience and standing on my right side, who'd been a cradle snatcher at 17. He got. And then it was like such a fairy tale, a long road ahead where we planned to walk on it together. There was so much to do, such little time because I wanted it all. Don't we all? We really feel like having it. But this is a cartoon put out by my students because it was my plight while balancing life's roles. And what started off like a fa fairy tale where we thought we'd go on this wonderful journey in uniform together was not to be so because our careers demanded it. 24 years out of my 36, I was alone, looking after children, looking after my career, in spite of that, looking after my own academic and growth, because I thought it was important. And again, he stood by me and he said, let us grow together without growing apart. And I think that is so important. <laughs> so in times like this, I'd like to share with you that very often we forget. We have family, we have friends who are there to support us, and it is our culture, our Indian traditions, which really build our roots. And we should be proud of it, and we should acknowledge it whenever we can. I still remember the time our family was in four parts, and a daughter was in one place, a five-year-old with epilepsy, my mother sick, and I just didn't know what to do, and my colleague said, just leave her with me. My husband was on a field firing in some other station, and two weeks I was with my mother leaving a five-year-old daughter with a colleague. So that's what it is. And the armed forces really has an extended family. And I really owe it to them. But in all this, thank you so much. In all this, I think the strength to all you women there is that multitask model, thy name is woman. I think that is our strength, which no one has. Because we have one extra X chromosome, isn't it? <laughs> So therefore, if you see all the Devis, they always have multiple hands. None of the male gods have so many hands. <laughs> so with these 
the dean as AF of AFMC was a moment of crowning glory. I was at my alma mater, having fought with my parents to join the armed forces and the AFMC. I was there back as the dean. And that is when I learned another important lesson that when you start growing, you have to care for many more other than yourselves. To handle yourself, you need your head. But to handle 700 kids, I needed my heart. So I remembered the lesson of balancing the head and the heart. And with that, again, after having gone to Northern Command, by then confidence, the armed forces gave me a lot of opportunities. And I could go as the first lady to an MG medical, which is all administrative of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh, when Article 370 was abrogated. And by then, I don't think anyone had any doubts. Initially, yes, even my seniors said, do you want to take on this challenge? I said, yes. If I'm wearing this uniform, I have to be a soldier. I'll do it. And I went to Kumar Post, Siachen, everywhere. And the MOs were absolutely thrilled. But with the graying hair came in a lot of you know, understanding that I can't change the world. And therefore, I learned my serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change, the courage to change what I can, and the intelligence to know the difference. So that is the lesson I learned. And with that, when I came as the third woman and the first pediatrician lieutenant general, as the first DSIDS medical, and today I humbly give my respects to General Bipin Rawat, whose st personal staff, principal staff officer, I was as a medical advisor. And I came in like a tsunami with the COVID and was given the charge of handling the tri-services response. But by then, empowered with the ability to having handled so much, I jumped in it and we could do a huge amount. And the eye went away, it was teamwork. Because illness to wellness is when the eye goes away and the we comes in. So that is how we proceeded. And within no time, we had set up 1,000 bedded hospitals, and the armed forces came as a sucker to the entire nation who was really in, in, under the effects of the tsunami of COVID. So that seems like such a beautiful fairy tale where, you know, uh, journey. But what were the now what? There were so many such moments. There were these huge ups and downs like the first posting, when I first, we were the first to send to a field, and I still remember in trousers being marched up to the then GOC, because he said, a woman in a field area, what am I going to do with her? And I just stood there, ramrod straight, and I said, if there's a, he said, what would I do if there's a war? I said, so I'm not staying in the rear, I'm going up front. So that was something which one started with and went on for the rest of my career. I think another huge challenge was balancing, because I wanted to, and my husband said, don't waste your brains, you must do. So after one child doing an MD, after a second child doing nephrology, going on to do fellowships and being a lifelong learner was a thing that I decided I needed this me time because I had to grow. If I am happy within, I can give happiness to everyone. I think it was tough single parenting. There were times when my daughter said, Bimar hona padega, mom, abhi mere saath baithogi. Because there were children in the ward, there were children at home and I had to do it all alone. I think, there, and, and the story goes on and on. What about the time when our family was split up into three parts, Pathankot, Hisar, Pune, Bombay, all over, and yet when we managed to everyone plan a leave, and we had planned a lovely South Asian holiday, and suddenly Kargil happened and we were called back and everything went for a six. But not only did I learn and my husband, but even the children learned how to adapt, adjust, and adopt. And that was, I think, a huge lesson. Thank you. But I think the toughest journey for me was letting my parents go. It was not easy to be a doctor, a daughter, an attendant, all combined in one, using the head and the heart. But when it was time to let them go, holding their hands and deciding that, yes, this is what they would have liked me to do, and letting them go were tough moments in my life. And I think this is what made me. And therefore, I put that little pot, which is the Japanese art called Kintsukuroi. It is ev with every crack, if it is healed with a beautiful golden glue, the pottery becomes even more beautiful. That's Kintsukuroi. And if I stand here today, a competent, confident, capable woman, it's because of the cracks that I got. And I f family and friends helped me. Thank you so much. Being 
you are woman in a man's world, well, there are difficult seniors everywhere, but I think it was important not to look at myself as a woman because I always took pride in serving with all humility with the three hats. As a doctor, I went on to be the first pediatric nephrologist of the armed forces and today we have six of them doing transplants, dialysis and the works. It was swimming against the tide because the armed forces didn't, want, didn't know that they needed a pediatric nephrologist or being able to spearhead operation Kojit as I called it for cooperation and Jeet over COVID. As a teacher, being dean at your own college and now the vice chancellor, I think I could have it all. And as a soldier, being a three-star general as a woman and MG Med Northern Command, one could do it all, absolutely. And I think I'm very honored, humbled and lucky to have been able to hold, wear all these three hats with Ilan. But having said that, what am I proud of? I am proud of being a woman. I'm proud that I could do it all because all these roles are without a gender. The effects of it, whether it's my patients, students, the soldiers, they don't have a gender. And yet I broke those barriers and said, I will have it all. And therefore, I stand here with all humility and thanking each one of you and saluting all the men who have supported such empowered women like me. Thank you so much and Jai Hind. And I'll request my husband to take a bow. He's sitting in the audience who's been my main supporter. Thank you so much. Thank you.